Let's go out to Monroe, Georgia, and talk to Zach. What's up, Zach? Hey, how are you doing today, Dr. Deloney? I'm good, brother. How are you, man? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, I had a question about my uh, son. He's uh, going to be turning seven uh, next month. Excellent. Um, I also have a, have a five-year-old daughter. Um, it's kind of about, like, toughness. Um, I don't want to not be empathetic towards him. Um, but it seems like every little thing that could potentially be hurting him, it scares him. And, uh, he wants to cry about it. Um, like the other day we were playing basketball with my daughter and him and my daughter got hit in the face, didn't cry or anything. He's like, man, I would have cried if that would have happened to me. And I just, I don't want to like nullify his feelings, but I don't want to, uh, say that they're okay as well. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah. Um, can I just tell you, I appreciate you asking this question because it sounds like you really want to do this one right. Yes, sir. Did you have um, a male role model in your life that hit the pendulum one way or the other? Uh, I did. Uh, my father's great. Um, I mean, he just, I don't, I don't really remember ever being like scared of anything, mm. uh, like physically, like throwing the baseball. Like I was never had a problem being scared playing football. Like I was always very physical. You, Okay. Is this also hard because your daughter's five now and she's starting to, you're starting to notice a toughness difference in them? It could be. It okay. could be all me, you know? No, like I don't I think, I, I don't think you, so at all. I don't think so at all. I think your question's good and I think it's from a good place. And I think the temptation is to holler and scream at our sons, right? And tell them to suck it up right. and get over it. And. You and I both know grown men who can't seem to do hard things. Right. And they still live with their moms and they still like get sad when someone has a different idea than them. Right. And they can't co like, so, um, I get that. Oh no, am I screwing my kid up or is there something wrong with my kid or does he need some tough love? Like those are all legitimate parenting questions. So I'm glad that you asked that man. Um, all right. So I, I want you to interrupt me at any moment. Okay. Cause I'm going to kind of go on a, kind of teach through this. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. All right. In the same, some of this is going to be hard to hear. Some of this is going to be like, Oh, thank God. And then some of this is going to be stuff that maybe you've never heard before. Okay. Uh -huh. Kids, um, in the same way, some kids are tall. Some kids are short. Some kids are stocky. Some kids are just rail thin. Kids are born with different levels of sensitivity. And I don't mean sensitivity in the, um, oh, that's a pretty butterfly or let's stomp the butterfly. I'm talking about impact, right? Like certain things hurt them more than they hurt other people. And mm -hmm. when we try to flatten it out, is my kid as tough as your kid? It's kind of like asking, is my kid as, why isn't my kid as tall as your kid? I'm going to make my kid taller. Uh -huh. So some of that sensitivity is just a part of is their, their makeup, okay? The question is, what do we do with it? And I've heard some great um, evolutionary psychology answers. Like there's like, it was always good for a tribe to have a couple of people in the tribe, you know, 10,000, 20,000 million years ago that was able to feel things a little bit different. That's where art comes from. Artists, that's where people who express themselves, people who are able to intuit things, right? The tribe needed that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I've read that. I, I, of course, there's no proof, but it sounds good, right? Um, here's the deal. Kids will learn how their sensitivity works in the world, okay? So here's what's important to know about a kid. By not attending to him when he gets hurt or when he thinks he's hurt, what he doesn't learn is he doesn't learn toughness. He learns, so you're not making him stronger. If you're like, suck it up or quit crying, you're not making him stronger. You're not making him tougher. What you're doing to him is teaching him to disassociate from himself. He unplugs from himself, okay? okay? And we transpose adult uh, feelings onto kids. Mm -hmm. As adults, we need to be tough. Like, this sucks, this hurts, and I've got to go get this thing done because my family needs to eat, right? Right. And we drop that on our sons or on our daughters when they're really little. They're very different things, but we want it to, we want, we want it to be flattened out. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what toughness looks like in a kid is actually a child's body realizing you are all on your own when things hurt. I think there's a strong difference between coddling and attending. Uh -huh. Here's coddling. Your kid gets hurt. He gets hit in the face with a basketball and y'all are in the middle of playing and you're like, oh my gosh, he's serious. And he's just crying and crying and crying. Coddling is sitting down and or taking a knee and looking him in the eye and saying, oh buddy, are you okay? And he goes, I hurt my face. And you say, I'm so sorry. Go inside and get some ice cream. You are done for the day. Go get your iPad and go sit on the couch and just, right? You, you are now in control of your life. Coddling is, I don't want you to ever have a, a hard or scary feeling. All right? Attending okay. is, your kid gets smashed in the face of the basketball. He starts crying. You don't think it hurt that bad, but here we are. And you take a knee and you say, buddy, let me see. And then you look him in the eye through his tears and you take your thumb and you wipe one of those tears and you say, buddy, I'm so sorry. That looked like that hurt. And he says, yeah, it hurt really bad. And say, can I have a hug real quick? And he gives a hug. And then you say, all right, buddy, head over to the sideline here. We're with you. We're going to keep playing. And the moment you're ready to come back in, we can't wait because this game doesn't work well without you. Okay. One of those is I see your pain. I trust you. If you say it hurts, it hurts. And we have other things that we need to keep doing. Okay. A lot of times that kids will get, quote unquote, hurt before chores or before hard things right? Or before getting ready to go to church or whatever in the morning. The temptation is just to blow it all off. All right, well, forget your chores. I'll do them. Just go sit down. That's coddling. Attending is, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Take the time you need to get ready. When you're done, then you're going to get your room done. Okay. So that they're learning, yep, pain is real and it hurts. And then there's stuff to do on the back end of that. Does that make sense? So, yeah, absolutely. So okay. what do you do like in your basketball example, you go to the sideline and what if they never want to come back because they're too scared to get hurt again? I'm not going to force them in that at the age of six or seven. Not when it comes to a game. Okay. I'm going to listen to that little body. And it may, it may be that um, your kid is not going to be a basketball guy. And I think that's right. okay. I think that's okay. Right. It, you may have to be somebody who um, changes their picture of what their relationship with the son was going to look like. Right. My dad, um, I think I've talked about here, my dad did one of the most masterful parenting jobs I've ever seen. I played varsity football in Texas, and it's just like Friday Night Lights. It's real, right? Probably similar in Georgia. Right. It's, it's crazy. Thousands of people came to my games, and I played on varsity for two years. My dad was wearing my letter jacket around town. He, I mean, he had his own. It was a, a jersey or whatever. It was a whole thing. My brother, my little brother went to college on a cello scholarship. Uh -huh. And I remember being really arrogant at, in, in 11th grade or 12th grade thinking, man, I hate it for my little brother that he has to follow like a big varsity athlete running his mouth, you know, all this stuff. My dad, I remember coming home from college one Christmas and my dad was going to a, a holiday. We were all going to the, the concert, the, the, the orchestra concert. And my dad was talking trash. He's like, you can't believe how amazing your brother is, dude. He's so amazing. Like, he is so much better musician than you. And I was like, no, I was pretty good too, right? But my, my dad was all in. Mm -hmm. And so here's the thing about toughness. Let's separate toughness from outcome. My brother's every bit as tough as me. You know what my brother could do from a toughness? He could sit. And study his music for hours and practice until he got something right. Uh -huh. I could run real fast and lift weights and get hit real mm -hmm. hard and then get back up. Those are both acts of toughness. They're just in different arenas. Right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge pain. And then the toughness comes from, and then we got a job to do. And I'm going to hold that pretty loosely with a seven-year-old. It might take all day for him to go do the chores that he needs to do. I take all day. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it might cut into, we were going to watch a movie tonight, but we're, we're not going to do that because you got to get your room done. He's going to learn, right. okay, there's things we got to do. But I'd never want to sacrifice that for the sake of um, creating a relational fracture with my kid. Right. Especially around basketball. Now, let me ask you one quick question on the side here. Um, 
Is pain a way he gets connection from dad? Uh, can you, what do you, what exactly do you mean that by that? Um, in my experience, there's, this is a, a select group. So I don't want this to be a blanket statement for all parents to be like, oh, I knew it. But if the only time he gets hugs from dad or gets dad to take a knee or gets dad to stop this flurry of activity, just to look him in the eyes is when he's hurting. No, I, I don't believe that that is the case. I okay. mean, I, I, I feel like I'm a very involved father. I mean, I, I do everything with them. Okay. Uh, you know, I take him to bed every single night. I tell him that I'm proud of him. Awesome. Um, you know, we, we do our nighttime prayers together awesome. every night. Dude, you're a great dad, uh, dude. That's awesome. So I tried, cool. I, I heard it on a podcast somewhere to tell him that you're proud of him every night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Quit listening to that podcast. So. No, that's, 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 that's awesome. Um, I think here I want you to recontextualize toughness. Okay. Toughness is doing hard things even when we don't think we can or we don't want to. Okay. All right. It doesn't have yes, to be sir. on a basketball court. Right. One last question on the side. Does he watch you or your your wife not do hard things when it's time? Or is he responding to how he's learned how to respond to pain from you guys? Uh I don't think so. Because okay. I mean we both we both get our our, jo our job's done, you know, whatever okay. is needing to be done. Cool. You know, that's one thing that I do tell him. I said, you know, and I, I don't know. My wife thinks I talk to him like he's older than what he is. Yeah. Uh, I have been uh, talked to about that. <laughs> but like, Give me an I'll, example. I'll, like the other day, we were just doing like a simple, like we were just uh, doing like a, a little workout. And it wasn't even that it's just like a polymetric workout. Um, just jumps basically. And his mother had moved his chair that he was using upstairs. Uh, so I was like, well, just use the bottom stair and get it done. He's like, well, that's like three inches further. That's so much harder. And I was like, well, it may be a little harder, but you can get it done. It's not the end of the world. And he's like, well, I'm just not going to do it. And I said, well, if you quit now, you're going to start a precedence of a precedence of quitting all the time whenever something gets hard. And she was like, you're being too hard on him. He's, he's too young for that. Yeah. You know, that, that's just one example. I think in that situation, I would probably do two things. Number one, I would move mine three inches too. Okay. And so I'm going to always go first, especially with a young son. He's watching everything his daddy's doing. I'm going to go first. And so, yep, we're going to, we're going to up it a little bit. It's going to be hard for me and I bet I can do it. And it's going to be hard for you. And I bet you can do it. Mm -hmm. The second one is if he's six and he says, I don't want to do this workout. I'm going to make sure I knock it out. All right. And that's what, that's what we did. And eventually uh, I, I, I told him, you know, you don't want to start quitting things because once you quit things, it's easier to quit something every time you quit something. Right. And, um, and eventually he did go back and do it on his own. Awesome. I didn't force him to do it. And I, I praised him for that. It's because, well, here's what you want to be careful of. You don't want him learning that he has to achieve a thing for dad. Dad's going to hold it until the, he achieves a thing. Right. Right. We do want to reinforce it, but my guess is he went back because he watched his dad do it. Okay. Not because his dad was like, if you do this now, you're always going to be a quitter. Nah, he's six, man. He's not, or he's eight or whatever. He's not always going to be a quitter. Right. He needs to learn what it feels like to be on a team with somebody and then say, I'm not going to do it. And the teammate goes forward and does it. Right. For most of us, that'll haunt us, right? And I want him to feel that. I want him to feel it. And I, he's not going to lose my relationship over that. No way. Not at this right. age, Not at this age. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, I'm not going to create a fracture in that relationship over over something that small. And I watch it on Little League game. I mean, just dads sacrificing their relationship with their sons over a performance issue, over how fast somebody ran, over how – I mean, just – Silly stuff. It's a game, right? And so I do love that you're inviting him down to work out with you. 
And I do love that you're modeling how hard the work is. And I do love that you're inviting him into it. Let's both, let's hold, both of you hold the performance standard of it pretty loosely. Right. Because he's going to come around. He's going to watch his dad and he's going to watch his dad and he's going to watch his dad and he's going to watch his dad. And I think that's, I think that's a, the modeling is the most important thing here. And like you said, um, if that three inches gets uh, on the box jump gets scary, cool. I'm going to add three to mine. I'm not doing that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how even when it's hard and we're going to go like, as Nick Barr says, we're going to go one more. We're going to do it hard. Cool. We can do that. Right. But we're going to model that. All that to say is you're a good dad, man. Know the difference between coddling and attending. Know the difference, difference between toughness across different, um, uh, different arenas and toughness just looks different. And it has a very singular definition. Sometimes that I just, I just reject. Um, Toughness is doing hard things when I don't want to. Or I don't feel like doing it. And that can be across any number of things. Over time, he's going to watch his dad. He's going to watch his mom. And he's going to learn this is what hardworking, tough, get-it-done adults look like. And here's what compassionate, loving adults look like in the same body. That's going to be the best predictor of what he ends up doing long-term. Not dad being like, do the workout, right? But all that to say is he's lucky, lucky, lucky to have you as a dad. You are on the right path, my brother. Every kid's got to find their path. They got to be people of character and they got to work really hard and they got to be tough. But sometimes it's with a cello and sometimes it's with a football and sometimes it's with a math textbook and sometimes it's in the military. Hold the picture really loosely and go raise tough, disciplined, caring kids. 